98% of Americans were actually farmers a couple hundred years ago. And so if anybody looks back on their family line, they are tied back to farmers and ranchers and people who worked and tilled and toiled the land. And so I believe that we need to go back to basics. As men, we're supposed to be leaders and providers of not just our families, but our communities. We're supposed to lift up, build up, push, motivate, inspire those people around us. And the way that you live your life should be such a light that other people see Christ living inside you. And what happens is we get distracted by the media. We see the news. We see what's going on on social. We see what's going on around the world. And we begin to believe the narrative that it's pushing at us. And my friends, the only narrative that you should believe is the one that says you are a light in Christ in the Bible. And if people would just go back to that, being service minded, not how much money I can make. You know, it's so interesting. I follow a lot of digital media experts. I've gotten to know some really uh, powerful players like yourself. Uh, I'm not going to throw names, but I know a lot of the guys now. I've been in for five years. And one of the things that a lot of marketers do is they talk about how much money they sold and, you know, or whatever. What if you were so service minded that the money just floods in? If you look at what I promote, what I push, what I do, it's never, I tried the, Hey, I made a hundred thousand. I made a million or we had to be so service minded that everything else will serve it, come in. And that's when you're talking about ranchers, farmers, you realize that the suicide rate for a farmer and a rancher is double the highest suicide rate of any person in America. It's double. You know why that is? No it's because those farmers and those ranchers provide food. They provide schooling for their families. They provide food for the entire nation. And there's only 2% of the population that are farmers and ranchers. And guess what? They're, they're, they're dealing in commodities. So beef is up one week. Beef is down. Corn is up. Corn is down. Wheat is up. Wheat is down. And guess what? If you don't time the market just right and, and you're praying that there's rain, right, you could lose hundreds of thousands of dollars and your family ranch that is fifth generation, fourth generation, third generation could go belly up that fast. And so wow. for that guy that you're, you're, you bought those beers for, he's so used to serving other people, whether it's his community, what, with beef, whether it's his family, he's not used to being allowed to have somebody do something kind for him. And my dad's the prime example. My dad is that man. Exactly. Like I've seen my dad to teach somebody how to ride a horse, like spend hours and hours and hours and hours, and they don't have any money to pay him and he just do it anyway. All right. And so I think as business owners, if we just get obsessed with like, how can my service be incredible? How can my service be not just a little bit better than the competition, but be double or triple as good as the competition? If you get obsessed with that, they will come back to you time and time and time and time and time again. If you, you should not sell to somebody just because you can on a one-time offer, right? If, you're, if they're going through your funnel or if they're going through your business and they have the opportunity to buy something else, you should not sell them just because they're in a buying mood. Because if you do and you don't follow up with magnificent service, they're going to end up resenting you a week later, a day later. They're going to have remorse for buying that thing. And so I've been on both ends of the spectrum. Two, three, you know, upsells, order bumps, all that. Just get as much as you can. And I found out that when I got more into that, my service side didn't back up what I was selling. And I was selling just because I could, not because I was servicing a need that absolutely could fix the problem. And I noticed that in my businesses, and this has been a couple of years ago, that that just didn't work long term. And the answer is service, 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 service. You got to meet the customer where they're at and give them like exceptional service. There's a, in, in Proverbs 23, 4, it says, do not weary yourself with the overwhelming desire to gain wealth. Mm -hmm. Cease from your own understanding of it. When you set your eyes on wealth, it's suddenly gone. The wealth certainly makes itself like, uh, itself wings like an eagle and flies to the heavens. Ah. And I thought that I, I talked to that with our guys just last week because the, the whole point was like, when you're just trying to get the end result that everyone else has, you try to take all these shortcuts. It's like, yep. Hey, don't, don't just focus on the wealth. Like if you're chasing just the wealth around, you're just always going to fall into like all these different traps rather than 
what's the focus that we want to have, right? And it's I, I think it fits with what you're talking about is, well, if you take a step back and you create something very, very good to solve a great problem, and there's actually a reason that people will exchange money for it that's, that's more valuable. I always love that term of like, uh, ever, my wife and I, we pray uh, for our stuff with King's Brotherhood. And I'm just like, God, bring yeah. me the people where their money is not worth, it isn't as valuable to them as the transformation in their life. 